Hi everyone, I welcome you all to our process measurement and instrumentation lecture series. Today, we are going to work on some solved examples on temperature measurement. The theory and principles of temperature measurement and instrumentation was covered under our first online lecture. If anyone is interested to get a revision on uh, the theory and principles of temperature measurement and instrumentation, uh, I invite you all to go back to our lecture one and learn the principles and theory of different temperature measurement techniques. So in this lecture, we will uh, focus on several examples that will uh, improve your knowledge as well as problem solving skills focused on temperature measurement and instrumentation techniques. Exercise 1. Find out the working temperature ranges of the resistance temperature devices, uh, abbreviated as RTDs, made of platinum, copper, nickel, and tungsten. We all know that uh, resistance temperature devices are working uh, on the principle of uh, uh, electrical resistance is proportional to the temperature change. Uh, based on that, we can uh, prepare the uh, temperature measurement instruments uh, in order to measure the temperature in the field. So, uh, uh, in resistance temperature devices, uh, several uh, metals are used as the uh, metal element for measuring the uh, resistance. So, uh, in this case, uh, this exercise is talking about uh, four such metal elements. Uh, those are platinum, copper, nickel, and tungsten. In this exercise, what we need to do is we have to compare the different applications of these metals uh, used as uh, resistance temperature devices. So, uh, if we uh, search the uh, existing findings on uh, resistance temperature devices, uh, we can uh, find that uh, the resistance temperature devices uh, manufactured using platinum metal elements uh, has a measurement range of around uh, minus 270 degrees Celsius to uh, 1000 degrees Celsius. And also uh, copper, uh, we have a limited uh, temperature measurement range that is minus 200 to uh, 260. And for nickel, uh, a little bit uh, higher, but uh, still a limited one, minus 200 to 430. And again, tungsten, we get a, a larger uh, temperature measurement range that is minus 270 to 1100. Even though we have a higher uh, temperature measurement range, um, especially the platinum uh, element based uh, resistance temperature devices are uh, used uh, below 650. Uh, sometimes uh, in rare cases only it is used uh, at higher temperatures. So um, uh, resistance temperature devices using these metals are commonly used in non-corrosive and non-conducting environments without protection. That is because uh, in uh, non-corrosive and non-conducting environments, there is no threat of uh, corrosion or uh, decaying of the metal element. So it is not required to have special protection. But in uh, specific uh, industrial applications where we need for protection against uh, corrosion and other uh, environmental uh, effects, uh, we uh, have to uh, give a protection to the uh, temperature measurement device. Uh, so in this case, uh, we, uh, for resistance temperature devices, uh, they use a sheath. Uh, sheath. A sheath means a, a, a kind of an insulation that, that protects the uh, temperature measurement element or the temperature measurement device or instrument uh, from the uh, environmental effects like corrosion. Uh, then uh, uh, resistance temperature devices have a smaller temperature range uh, compared to uh, uh, the most common one that is thermocouples, but uh, uh, if we compare uh, resistance temperature devices with thermocouples, uh, the uh, RTDs are more uh, stable. Uh, they give uh, uh, good uh, uh, temperature measurement sensitivity and stability uh, when there are small temperature differences uh, in our application uh, because in thermocouples, uh, it's a little difficult to obtain the uh, small temperature differences uh, with uh, higher sensitivity. Uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, the platinum resistance thermometer is the uh, most uh, popular or uh, widely used uh, uh, metal element as well as uh, it gives the best ratio of price to performance. Uh, that means uh, the, the cheapest one uh, and also uh, giving a higher range and uh, suitability for uh, 
uh, different applications. So uh, that is the overall uh, overview of uh, resistance temperature devices that was uh, questioned in our exercise. So uh, in um, this kind of a question, uh, if it is asked in an examination or um, even for your general knowledge uh, to uh, apply, uh, I mean, uh, to select a, a temperature instrument in the industry while you're working or uh, when you have to design a new plant or something uh, these kind of knowledge is required uh, uh, know-how is required for a chemical and process engineer not only for rtds for all other temperature measurement techniques so let's go to the second exercise so exercise number two uh, it is a calculation based question so it uh, mentions like this the measured output electromotive force for a chromium constant and thermocouple reference junction at zero degrees celsius uh, we know that we can put the reference junction of a thermocouple in uh, different uh, temperatures uh, but in normal case it is zero degrees celsius uh, then uh, the the measured uh, ema for the electromotive force is uh, 10.65 millivolts so what we need to find out is uh, based on the electromotive force what is the temperature reading at this electromotive force for this uh, thermocouple. Uh, we know that uh, we have uh, several uh, thermocouples based on the metals uh, uh, or the thermo uh, uh, electric uh, metals that we use. So uh, uh, in this case it is chromium constant uh, and also uh, we uh, know about we have learned in our uh, lecture one about the uh, thermocouple tables that uh, provides us the values of electromotive forces under different temperatures. So uh, in this case, we have to use those, uh, we have to refer uh, the thermocouple tables for the calculation. So uh, if we refer the uh, thermocouple uh, tables, uh, the measured output uh, electromotive force for uh, uh, chromium, or we say that as chromal also, chromium constant is uh, same as chromal constant and so uh, whatever the name you can use. So uh, for a chromal constant and thermocouple, uh, reference junction at zero is uh, 10.65 millivolt. That is our data provided in the uh, question. So uh, first we have to find out uh, this value uh, where it is placed in a thermocouple table. So let's go to the thermocouple tables. Uh, so, referring uh, the thermocouple tables, we can uh, understand that the EMF values corresponding to each uh, temperature values are uh, based on the reference junction of 0 degrees Celsius. So, here we can see that it is 0 degrees Celsius. So, uh, all the types of thermocouples correspond uh, 0 EMF values. So, that means uh, it's easy if we uh, refer these uh, thermocouple tables so uh, our value uh, given in the uh, question is uh, between 10.5 and 11.2 so here we can see that this and this so that means our temperature is uh, between uh, 160 to 170 then how we can calculate this? Uh, we can use a linear interpolation method. So uh, we know that we can take the unknown temperature as uh, simple x. So we can write like this 11.222 minus 10.50 1 divided by 170 minus 160 uh, should equal to the EMF corresponding to the unknown temperature that is uh, 10.65 10 minus 10.501 divided by uh, <coughs> simple x minus uh, 160. So if we solve this for a uh, simple x, we will uh, receive a final value around 162. So uh, that is the answer, that is 162. So this is how uh, we uh, uh, calculate uh, the unknown temperatures so in uh, a thermocouple uh, based uh, uh, temperature instruments the temperature scale 
has been uh, marked uh, based on the uh, relationship between the uh, EMF and temperature according to this principle. Third exercise, suppose that the reference junction of a chromium constant and thermocouple is maintained at a temperature of 80 degrees Celsius and the output electromotive force measured is 40.102 millivolts when the hot junction is immersed in a fluid. So uh, it is clear that here the reference junction is not zero so we can't directly use uh, the values in the thermocouple tables we have to uh, add a correction uh, uh, that you can say as calibration uh, correction uh, some value that that is as a correction to the uh, zero reference uh, reference junction base values so we have to find out what is the hot junction temperature value uh, if we refer the uh, thermocouple tables again we can see that the uh, value corresponding to uh, 80 degrees Celsius uh, for a chromal constant and thermocouples uh, that is 4.983 right. that is what it is uh, shown here uh, we can find out from the thermocouple tables that it is uh, the corresponding uh, electromotive force for the reference junction temperature is 4.983 so that means uh, if we make it into a zero reference junction uh, uh, temperature we have to add uh, this uh, uh, electromotive force that is uh, the correction the corresponding electromotive force for the unknown temperature is 40.102 that is based on 80 degrees celsius reference junction and if we take it to zero reference junction we have to add the electromotive force that is corresponding to the reference junction temperature temperature that is 4.983 so if we add uh, 40.102 uh, uh, and uh, 4.983 we get the uh, electromotive force that is corresponding to the unknown temperature as the reference junction temperature as uh, 0 degree Celsius is for uh, 45.085 millivolt so then again we can revisit to the uh, thermocouple tables uh, to find out where it is uh, 45.085 that is exactly here that corresponds to 600 degrees Celsius so uh, we can say that the uh, indicated fluid temperature uh, for this temperature measurement is 600 degree Celsius right let's move to uh, the uh, fourth exercise that is again a theoretical based question uh, compare the characteristics of total radiation pyrometer optical pyrometer and infrared pyrometer so uh, we have learned about the principle and the theory of uh, pyrometers that is uh, radiation type uh, uh, temperature measurement devices in our uh, lecture previous lecture uh, for uh, temperature instrumentation theory now uh, we have to compare the three types of uh, radiation type uh, thermometers they are total radiation pyrometer optical pyrometer and infrared pyrometer so let's uh, go one by one uh, if we take the you know, total radiation pyrometer all these three types uh, use the uh, radiation uh, theory or radiation fundamental what happens is uh, a focusing uh, lens is uh, used to uh, obtain the radiation that is emitted uh, due to the temperature of that object and it uh, focuses the uh, radiation beam into a detector so in uh, total radiation pyrometer uh, these detectors are different type um, actually we can call them as uh, radiation uh, detectors or radiation sensors in this uh, picture it is uh, shown uh, a gas filled uh, detector that is uh, filled with uh, liquid nitrogen so uh, uh, the, the principle is all the alternative forms of radiation pyrometer have an optical system uh, not only total radiation uh, even optical pyrometer uh, they have uh, uh, an optical system and that focuses the energy emitted from the measured body into a certain uh, detector or uh, another uh, way of uh, measurement uh, so uh, actually in uh, total radiation pyrometers uh, the range is quite high uh, minus 100 degrees celsius to 3600 degrees celsius uh, a quite a large uh, temperature range can be uh, measured and um, uh, the thermal detector 
is the most important part in uh, total radiation pyrometer as we discussed. Uh, so the focal point of the optical system is uh, 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 is uh, uh, focused on a detector and uh, based on that the temperature can be uh, measured. Uh, then uh, the optical pyrometers, the principles of optics is used actually. Uh, in this case, uh, the incoming radiation from a certain source and uh, then uh, actually uh, in uh, total radiation pyrometer, uh, normally it is used only one lens, but here there can be multiple lens to focus the uh, radiation beam into a filament. Then we know that the radiation beams uh, contain photons and uh, that can have a photoelectric effect. If it is focused on a filament, we can have an attached circuit and uh, in the attached circuit, we can uh, obtain a certain uh, voltage or a current and we can uh, uh, use uh, some relationship between the current or the uh, voltage or the electromotive force that is created in the attached circuit with some uh, proportional relationship uh, with the temperature of the uh, source of the radiation. So uh, based on that principle, uh, we can uh, measure the uh, temperature using optical pyrometer. So uh, I hope you understood the difference between uh, the optical pyrometer and uh, total radiation pyrometer. The third type uh, of uh, pyrometers is infrared pyrometer. We uh, all know and we talked about infrared thermometers uh, actually that is uh, widely used in uh, nowadays also and that is a very important mobile type thermometer. So infrared instrument employs a photo cell to detect photon flux. So uh, in this case uh, it's a little different from others and uh, there is no um, uh, lenses uh, that are uh, used uh, but uh, instead uh, there is a photo cell and uh, the photo cell can detect the photon flux of the incoming radiation uh, then uh, we can measure the temperature rise in the source uh, so uh, sometimes in this case we can also use some kind of lenses or something to focus the focal point to obtain the focal point of the radiation. <clears throat> so in uh, IR uh, pyrometers also the temperature range is quite high uh, from minus 40 to 4000 degrees Celsius. So uh, this could be a possible uh, comparison between the three types of pyrometers under radiation type thermometer. I hope uh, this comparison is clear for you. Then let's move to the um, exercise 5. Uh, exercise 5 talks about the principle of uh, the, the relationship between uh, radiation and uh, the uh, the temperature of the uh, uh, the source uh, that is used in uh, radiation type thermometers. Uh, we have learned the basic theory in uh, high school or uh, the secondary schools. The Stefan Boltzmann law of radiated energy tells us that the rate of heat lost by uh, radi uh, radiant emission from a hot object is proportional to the fourth power of the uh, absolute temperature. Uh, so the, uh, the relationship uh, between the uh, Stefan Boltzmann law, otherwise we can call this as Stefan Boltzmann equation, that is the radiant heat loss rate or we can say heat flux that is uh, uh, heat flux rate or uh, I, we can say heat uh, emission rate. Uh, from a uh, 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 source is equal to the uh, emissivity factor multiplied by Stefan Boltzmann constant multiplied by the surface area uh, and uh, uh, fourth power of the absolute temperature of the source. So if we uh, take the, uh, the area term into the other side, we can get the heat flux. So uh, then uh, we can uh, build up some relationship between the temperature and the heat flux. Actually, uh, that is what this uh, exercise also asks us to do. So it asks us, it asks us uh, algebra, uh, algebraically manipulate this equation to solve for temperature in terms of all other variables. So how we can do it? We can do it like this. So uh, we know that uh, dQ over dt. is equal to emissivity Stefan Boltzmann uh, constant area of the source into the temperature into the power of 4 and if uh, we keep the temperature term alone we can say 1 over uh, uh, E sigma A dQ over dt is equal to temperature into the fourth power 
and uh, we can uh, finalize this uh, using uh, temperature term in the uh, left side and we can say it as uh, we can actually uh, say uh, uh, heat flux divided by E sigma. So uh, finally we can, so this is uh, heat flux or we can uh, name it as dq over dt divided by a. So uh, this is what uh, actually uh, we were focusing on and we can develop a relationship in any uh, radiation type uh, thermometer, the relationship between temperature temperature is proportional to the uh, fourth root of heat flux. In other terms, uh, we can say, in other terms we can say, heat flux is proportional to the fourth power of temperature. So uh, this uh, relationship can be used in temperature measurement devices using radiation uh, principle. We can calculate the unknown uh, temperatures in uh, radiation type uh, pyrometers. So uh, the next example is based on that. A radiation pyrometer measuring the temperature of a piece of glowing hot steel coming out of a furnace uh, at a steel mill produces a millivolt signal uh, of uh, so this signal is uh, at the thermopile sensing element. So a uh, thermopile sensing element is uh, something like it senses the heat flux and uh, it uh, uh, proportionate to that a certain relationship with respect to the temperature. Uh, it creates an electromotive force. So the measured uh, electromotive force is 12.69 millivolt uh, when the steel is at a temperature of 1400 uh, degree Fahrenheit. So that means uh, this is uh, a reference uh, temperature. So we know the electromotive force at the given temperature that is 1400 degree Fahrenheit. So what we need to do is calculate the approximate millivolt output signals at the following target temperatures. So uh, the first one is 1600 degree Fahrenheit. The second one is 800 degree Celsius and the third one is 1000 Kelvin. So when you go to solve this uh, example, it is very important to uh, uh, first know the relationship between temperature and the electromotive force. Uh, so uh, from previous exercise, uh, we uh, learned that uh, heat flux is uh, proportionate uh, to the fourth power of temperature. So uh, that means uh, we can write it here also, heat flux proportionate to the fourth power of temperature. And also we know uh, the uh, heat flux is uh, directly proportional to the EMF value, right? So we can simply say based on this EMF value is proportionate to the fourth power of temperature. So this uh, relationship we can use to calculate the electromotive forces that we don't know at the known temperatures or the other uh, wise we can uh, do the vice versa also uh, using this. So this is very important to scale the uh, temperature measurement device or uh, know the principle of temperature measurement devices. So the other important thing that we should keep in mind in this calculation, most of the students make some error here, that is in Stefan Boltzmann equation, the temperature should be in Kelvin, not in Fahrenheit or not in degree Celsius. Uh, so we have to find out the uh, known temperature values in the unit of Kelvin. So uh, we can find out the, the given temperature uh, 1400 degrees Fahrenheit corresponds to uh, 1033.15 Kelvin. Uh, 1600 degree Fahrenheit corresponds to 1144.2 Kelvin as well. Uh, 800 degree Celsius corresponds to 1173.15 Kelvin. So here uh, we can uh, use that uh, the previous uh, relationship that is uh, EMF 
proportionate to fourth power of the temperature then uh, we can uh, uh, I will show you the first uh, case only I'm going to calculate the unknown uh, uh, electromotive force for 1600 degree Fahrenheit uh, the same calculation procedure will be used for other values so you can uh, find out them by yourself um, and I will uh, give you the final answers for the, uh, the rest but the first one I will show you how to calculate here so it's very easy electromotive force is proportionate to the uh, fourth power of uh, temperature so we can write down uh, 12 point 69 proportionate to uh, 1033.15 into 4th power and also the unknown uh, uh, electromotive force that could be uh, kept as simple x proportionate to uh, 1144.26 into the fourth power so uh, using this uh, relationship we know that we can put the same constant to the uh, uh, left uh, to the right side and uh, make it equal or otherwise we can divide this uh, equation one and equation two so if i divide the equation two by equation one then uh, i will obtain x divided by uh, 12.69 is equal to uh, 1144.26 divided by 1033.15 into the fourth power. So if you solve this uh, uh, calculation, uh, you can use a calculator if you want. Uh, then uh, you can find out the unknown uh, EMF value that is that corresponds to 1600 degree Fahrenheit is 19.09 uh, millivolt. So you can uh, use this uh, kind of uh, 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 calculation procedure in uh, radiation type uh, pyrometers. So you can follow the same principle to calculate uh, the other values. So I am going to give you the final uh, answers for the three cases. Please do it by yourself and check whether you get the same answer. So the first one what we got is 19.09 and the second one is 14.76 uh, and the uh, last one is 11.14. Please check whether you get these answers by uh, calculating uh, using the same procedure. Okay. So let, let's move to uh, another question that is exercise 7 uh, that is very important one actually uh, this uh, exercise uh, was uh, once uh, uh, an examination question also in semester examination question uh, a certain part of uh, a question actually this is a thinking type question uh, you have to uh, understand the principles of instrumentation theory in uh, temperature measurement as well uh, you have to think uh, several times uh, so it is uh, not just theoretical based question but it's not just memorizing the theory so uh, this uh, this actually reflects the industrial application so let's read the uh, question and then try to answer it suppose two temperature measuring instruments are measuring uh, the exact same te uh, process temperature providing redundant indications inside a control loop so we can see in the figure uh, there is a process vessel like we see in the in industry in the process industry the process vessel can be a reactor or any kind of uh, uh, unit operation equipment so uh, we have uh, two uh, temperature devices to measure the temperature in a control room so we know uh, the, the control rooms are there in the industry so uh, uh, there is a voltmeter that is uh, uh, based on the thermocouple principle and the other one is a liquid filled thermometer and uh, based on that theory it is uh, used uh, uh, Borden tube gauge in uh, if I talk about Borden tube gauge actually we are going to learn about it in the next lecture uh, under pressure measurement devices but Borden tube is simply a kind of uh, expansion device so uh, what happens is the liquid filled uh, uh, temperature devices uh, the, uh, when the bulb is uh, situated in a certain temperature the liquid is expanded 
and uh, uh, based on that uh, important tube gauge so that is just only the scale there there can be a kind of a spring or a kind of a mechanical element that uh, that uh, moves a pointer uh, with respect to the expansion so uh, uh, this uh, Borden tube uh, itself also can expand. That is a simple explanation about Borden tube gauge that is required for this question. Then uh, uh, what happens is, uh, so uh, we have read the question again, uh, the, the, uh, the remaining part of the question. Uh, both instruments are rather primitive. The thermocouple indicator is nothing more than an analog millivolt meter movement and the field bulb system that is the Borden tube gauge um, is a uh, mechanism used as a temperature indicator. So we discussed that part. Now, suppose that the operator accidentally bumps the thermostat in the control room. What do you mean by thermostat? That is a component of a control system which senses the temperature of the system so that system's temperature is maintained near a desired set point. I don't know whether you understood by that explanation, but I will simply explain. explain. Thermostat is kind of a valve uh, that we can, uh, uh, we can adjust the thermostat to increase or decrease the temperature of a system. So uh, actually this uh, here, uh, this thermostat means uh, uh, might be uh, the, uh, if this control room is uh, under air conditioned environment, uh, especially in uh, foreign countries, sometimes in uh, winter season, we use heaters to heat up the uh, rooms. So whatever the case, I think this uh, question is based on uh, winter season. So that is why the operator increases the temperature inside the control room because uh, he might uh, feel uh, uncomfortable with the uh, low temperature by the air conditioner or uh, the atmospheric temperature. So that is why he uh, increased the control room's ambient temperature by 5 degrees Celsius. Then uh, we have to... Uh, uh, assume the process vessel temperature remains the same so uh, nothing happens with the process only disturbance happened is the control room temperature increased by 5 degrees celsius suddenly uh, then uh, the question asks uh, describe the effect of elevated control room temperature on both temperature indicators now we have two indicators so being sure to explain why for both cases okay so think now uh, what happens is we have to think in this question. What happens is control room temperature increased by 5 degrees Celsius. So uh, for the thermocouple, first if we take the thermocouple temperature indicator, the reference junction for the thermocouple system must be inside the control room. So if the temperature of the control room increases, that means the reference temperature for the thermocouple system also increases. If the reference temperature increases by 5 degrees Celsius, what happens? The reading will decrease by 5 degrees Celsius because voltmeter reading will be read uh, based on the reference temperature. So if the reference temperature increases means uh, the voltmeter reading will be reduced. So that is why the temperature will be reduced by 5 degrees Celsius. That is the uh, 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 that is the effect that we can uh, deduce uh, under the given uh, explanation. Then uh, what will happen to the Borden tube gauge? That is a liquid field system and of course the bulb is situated in the process vessel but the Borden tube gauge is inside the control room. The Borden tube gauge itself can be affected by the ambient temperature. So uh, uh, since the ambient temperature increases by 5 degrees Celsius, then the expansion of the Borden tube will increase and that will be proportionate to the increment of the temperature. So uh, the temperature reading will be uh, increased by 5 degrees Celsius. So that is the effect that can be happen to the Borden tube gauge. So it is clear that uh, there is some effect by the ambient temperature to the uh, thermometers, uh, especially thermocouple and uh, liquid field systems so that is why uh, calibration error for the ambient temperature should be uh, accounted when calibration is performed uh, so uh, anyway uh, here a nice thing happens uh, we actually increase 5 degrees Celsius in the control room but nothing happens to the process what we are measuring is the process but due to the increment uh, the same uh, proportionate thing will happen to the uh, Borden tube gauge while thermocouple will give a reduction or the other side so increase 5 degrees celsius it will uh, show a reduced uh, temperature reading by 5 degrees celsius so that is the explanation that we can give uh, for this uh, 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 practical example or the application based example uh, question right uh, the last uh, question that is uh, exercise 8 uh, here what we have to do is we have to compare the 
pros and cons of the resistance temperature devices and thermistors of course thermistor is also a, re a resistance temperature device but the application or the the construction is little different so based on that there are advantages and disadvantages of thermistors as well as conventional resistance temperature devices so uh, and also we have to discuss about the applications of resistance temperature devices and thermistors so uh, in this table it is clear about the uh, uh, first the uh, pros and then the cons and application so first uh, pros or the uh, advantages in uh, uh, when we compare resistance temperature devices with the thermistors resistance temperature devices are more stable and can measure even small temperature differences while thermistors have a fast output response uh, to temperature changes with higher measurement sensitivity that means if we consider the measurement sensitivity or the accuracy thermistor is uh, quite uh, um, uh, better than uh, resistance temperature devices uh, and the other case is uh, resistance temperature devices the range is higher than thermistors uh, of course uh, thermistors have a lower uh, temperature measurement range and uh, the other thing is um, uh, thermistors are small and inexpensive while uh, resistance temperature devices are uh, comparatively more expensive than thermistors and uh, also the highlighted the highlighted disadvantage of thermistors is nothing but the measurement range is quite limited that is a brief discussion about the pros and cons of uh, resistance temperature devices over thermistors when we consider about the applications of all these uh, two because thermistor is also resistance temperature device so uh, we can uh, normally use resistance temperature devices in uh, different applications uh, especially in automobiles to measure the engine temperature it is uh, uh, the used one in especially vehicles is a resistance temperature device uh, if you accidentally get a chance to look inside the, uh, the how uh, inside a vehicle how uh, the engine temperature is indicated inside the dashboard so uh, that uh, temperature measurement device is uh, uh, based on a resistance temperature resistance uh, temperature measurement uh, technique and uh, the other examples are amplifiers, transistors, gain stabilizers like uh, uh, electronic or electrical equipment as well uh, uh, to measure the temperature in uh, heating and air conditioning, refrigeration and ventilation equipments, uh, mostly the uh, resistance type uh, devices are used as well medical equipment, military aerospace equipment, food processing uh, plants and all other uh, related industries. Uh, these uh, resistance temperature devices are uh, very popular as the temperature measurement devices or thermometers. Uh, so we discussed eight uh, example uh, problems for uh, temperature measurement and instrumentation theory. Uh, uh, I hope uh, these uh, explanations for these examples problem solving uh, is very useful for you to get prepared for the uh, final examination uh, as well as for your general know-how on uh, temperature instrumentation. So we will meet with the next lecture under process instrumentation that is uh, pressure measurement and instrumentation. Until we meet with that lecture, have a nice day and goodbye.